everyone and welcome to the Good News Wednesday show brought to you each week to put a smile on your face and get you through the other half of another challenging week. I'm Karen Donovan, your host, and I'll be bringing you the show tonight and I hope that you enjoy it. The first thing we always do every week is answer a very important question. <laughs> So as you know, we challenge you to get your mind off of your other problems, right? So the question this week is, you go into a dark room. Here's what you have. You have a match and in the room, there's an oil lamp, kindling and newspaper. Which would you light first? Think about it. Okay, time is up. Do you have your answer? You go into a dark room with a match and there's kindling, oil lamp, and newspaper in the room. Which one do you light first? Well, you light the match first. <laughs> because obviously if you don't light the match, you won't have a fire to light the other things. Oh, did I get you? I hope not. Anyway, hope we got you thinking for our question of the week. Now on to our topic, which is strategies for a happy life. And tonight we're going to be talking about what is your anchor? <music> That's right, folks. I've come to admire writers and people who give us their thoughts and put down quotes so that we can ponder over them. And I came across a quote this week by Jane Hunt. And I don't know Jane Hunt. I will have to look into what she's all about a little bit more. But she wrote something very insightful that matches up with our topic tonight, which is, what is your anchor? Jane wrote, what an anchor is to a ship, hope is to the soul. Both ships and souls are kept safe by a firm, secure anchor that keeps holding despite turbulent winds and churning tides. Hmm. So, you know that every week we take a bit of a jump off from the book we're studying, which is The Happiness Trap by Russ Harris. And this week, Russ talks about when you encounter turbulence, storms in life, the best thing to do is to drop anchor. Now, he has a different take on what you do at that point, but I started thinking about, well, what is an anchor? What is its purpose? 
what do sailors do when they run into one of those big storms? So I started doing a little research about that. And a big disclaimer here, I'm the last person in the world to be uh, talking about or, or, or giving advice on ships and sailing because I get motion sickness and I have since I'm a little kid and nobody ever wants to take me on the boat. Nobody, nobody. But anyway, nonetheless, I have studied what expert sailors have said about three things to do when you hit a storm or when you hear a storm is coming. Number one, clear the decks. Number two, find a safe harbor to anchor in. And number three, be rigged and ready to go. And I'm gonna explain what I mean by each of those three things and what I learned. So first of all, if you hit a storm in life, just as if you hit a storm on a boat, the first thing you wanna do is clear the decks. You want to get rid of all of the things that might fly around in the storm. You know, worst thing you can be doing is trying to, you know, batten down the hatches and having, you know, things blowing off the deck and everything like that. I mean, I haven't been on boats in a storm, but I can imagine what it's like. So what do we do in life? We have to think about that in the same way when we know that we are facing a difficulty, when something difficult is coming up, we want to be able to concentrate on that one thing. You know, a lot of people pride themselves in being able to multitask. But when you have something really, really important that you have to pay attention to, you cannot multitask. You have to put your eyes on that one area and focus on that. So the best way to do that is Put away the other worries that you have. Um, explain to other people that you need some time. You know, and when you're in the middle of something, facing something important, a storm in life, you want to be able to have that time to just focus, center on what you're going to have to face and calm yourself in, in whatever way you find helpful to you. So that's number one is clear the decks. Now, number two find a safe harbor in which to anchor your boat. You know, when you drop anchor, you don't want to drop anchor facing a bunch of big rocks. Because what happens? Well, uh, Sailor Dan told me on the video that I watched that if you anchor near a big area of high rocks, and something happens to your anchor and it lets loose or the storm turns your boat around, your boat is going to crash into the rocks and get demolished. So you don't want to do that. You want to find a safe harbor. A safe harbor is an area that has been surveyed, that the ground is level, and that you know that <clears throat> other people have successfully anchored their boats there. And then there's the whole process of anchoring a boat, which I found to be totally interesting. The, the anchor is very important, but the chain is super important and how you anchor the boat and how the anchor goes in to the sand down below. But I'm not going to get into that on tonight's video. We just want to know for our purposes, what do we do in life when we face a storm like that? We want to find a safe place in which to face our problem, our storm, and safety being with people who you know, love, and care about you, with uh, an environment that's safe and secure, something where you feel calm and peaceful, not something where you're going to be more upset by what's going on around you, much less what's going on in your head. So that's making sure that you drop anchor in a safe harbor. Now, the last one I thought was really cool, being rigged and ready. <laughs> I kind of like that. It kind of caught my attention. So here's the thing. Captain Dan said, you need to be able at a moment's notice to be able to take 
the boat and take control of it if something happens to the anchor. Now, he said that a lot of people, what they do is they pack up their sails and they pack up all their gear and their motors and everything. And sure enough, something happens to the boat. They have no control over their boat. So they leave the things out that they're going to need, the tools they're going to need. And we have to do the same thing in life. We have to be rigged and ready to go. We have to be on the lookout when we are facing a problem. If something comes up and we need to be able to um, ask someone a question, we need to be able to have access to communication. We need to be able to have access to the internet. I mean, who doesn't learn things from the internet? I've got more to share on that a little bit later. Um, and being, you know, able to just be ready to move on a moment's notice so that if something isn't going right, if you, if you, you know, if what you thought was happening is not what's coming to be, then maybe you have to make a quick change rather than just stay there and get dashed into the rocks. So those are the three things that we learn from sailors and boating about what to do when we're facing the storms of life. And I'd like to leave you with a little thought from a very famous person by the name of Franklin Roosevelt. He said, a smooth sea never made skilled sailors. Hmm. I guess he knew what he was talking about. When you face that adversity and you face those storms of life, the one thing that you can feel confident about is that even as you're going through those storms of life, you will learn from those things and come out the other side a more knowledgeable and a more strong and a more skilled sailor of life. So there's my analogy for tonight, folks, on what's your anchor. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll look forward to talking with you next time on Strategies for a Happy Life. know some weeks we cover a real estate topic and other weeks we cover kind of a, a review of a product. Well tonight is a little bit of a stretch on the product review but yet I feel like it still fits into that category and it's you know something that I came across in my life and I thought I'd share it with you and hopefully it will be something that will help others. So I was speaking tonight about ships and sea and sailors and motion sickness, which I, I've suffered from all my life. And I have not made a lot of friends over that. No friends or fans over motion sickness, I'll tell you. However, just this past week, I learned something about getting dizzy and being and feeling like the room is spinning around and something that I never in all my life knew. And I think that it might've been what's caused my problems all my life. And maybe it's something that will help you. As a matter of fact, I've told a couple people already and they've told me, you know, I've had that before more people than I would, would have thought. Anyway, I talked about the fact that um, I would often, for no reason, just get dizzy and feel like motion sickness. Like I would, when I, when I would ride in a car, fly in a plane, <laughs> go on a boat or go on a, an amusement park ride. 
when I was a kid. So uh, my doctor said, you have positional vertigo. And I said, what is that? Because I've heard of vertigo before, but I thought, well, you know, that's something I don't have that. Well, it seems, it turns out that um, there in your inner ear, in your ear, and I'm not a doctor, I'm a realtor, so I'm just going to explain this the way, the best way I can. And then I'm going to give you a couple of links and a couple of people that talked about it on videos that I thought were very interesting and helpful. Um, there in your inner ear, there are, there are crystals. And most of the time, the crystals are set in one particular place in your ear canal and they don't move and that's why when you sit still you're looking straight ahead and you're and you're feeling fine and you're you don't feel like you're moving but when these crystals get displaced they can go and start rubbing around on the rest of your in, inner ear and and it makes your ear and your thus your head and your brain feel like you're spinning around or moving when you're not and that's what's very interesting so well, what do you do about that do you have to have an operation do you have to take drugs well come to find out and this is my product review for tonight there is a maneuver a movement that can put the crystal back in the right place and this is called the Epley Maneuver. Now, I'm sure there's different forms of vertigo, and I'm not saying that I'm giving you the answer, the be-all and end-all answer to what could be wrong if you have something like this or a loved one does. But in this particular case, when the crystal is in the wrong location and you've got to get it back to the right location, there's a maneuver that you can do, and this Dr. Epley explains it and at first it's a little hard to understand but it, after a bit you can start to understand it so what you do is is you lie on your bed and beneath your back area you put like two big pillows so that when you lie back your head is down at like a 30 degree angle i don't know if you can see that so good with my fingers I demonstrate with my head, but then you start laughing at me. So your head is down, hanging down below the pillows by 30 degrees, and you turn your head to the right or the left. Now that's the question. And you might want to go to a doctor and find out which is the best one for you, because it depends on whether you have, have it in your right ear or your left ear. <laughs> but anyway, try it one way and, and tilt your head. Like tilt your head just like at a 45 degree angle, right? Down 30 degrees and over 45 degrees. Not all the way over here, but just over here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to see if you feel more dizzy. You, you have to do this when you actually have the symptoms. And then you turn your head the other way and see if it feels, if you feel more dizzy over there. Then you can sort of tell whether you should start on the left side or the right side. Now, when you are lying down, you turn your head to the side that you're supposed to turn it to, and you lie right down to that 30 degree angle, and you dangle, basically dangle your head, it feels a little uncomfortable, for um, they say between 30 and 60 seconds. I'd say make it 60, because the first time I did it, it didn't work. And then after that, then you turn your head to the other side. So you start over here and then you go over here. So you're going down and to the right or the left and then to the left and then another 60 seconds. And then finally you turn all the way over till you're lying on your side, another 60 seconds, and then you sit up slowly. Now, when I did this, when I had actually had it, I was so sick. Talk about seasickness. It was beyond that. 
I won't go into further details on that. But I got up and I carefully kept my head up. And then I sat in a, you know, recliner chair about a 45 degree angle and just, you know, rested for a good bit of time. And finally, when I got up, it was gone, totally gone. I'm like so thankful. Anyway, if you ever had anything like this before, you might want to talk to your doctor and see if you have positional vertigo. There's other kinds of vertigo, but for some reason, what this does, it just gets the crystal back to where it's supposed to be in your ear. And all of a sudden, you do not feel dizzy anymore. You do not feel seasick anymore. You do not feel like the room is spinning anymore. And uh, it's it's wonderful. There's more things you can do to treat it. But um, And I know this is a little long, but I thought it bore repeating because I think there's maybe a bunch of people out there that aren't aware of this, as I was not. So I hope this is helpful to someone out there watching that might never have thought about the fact that what they thought they had was simple motion sickness or just something weird going on, or they were going to have to have a big surgery on their head, but instead is something that you can overcome with this maneuver and obviously with time. Okay, hope that was helpful. And now on to our trivia question. That's right, folks. If you're wondering how you can get in on the fun of our Fun Day Monday contest, then all you have to do is send me an email to karen at homesbydonovan.com for your complimentary copy of our Monday morning wake up newsletter. And it arrives in your inbox on Monday morning with an inspirational topic as well as our trivia question for the week that you get to think about until Wednesday when you find out the answer. This week's question was, of course, about something to do with anchors and sailing, because that's what we've been talking about. And the question is as follows. Which of these people is not, not a famous fictional sailor. <laughs> this is a fun one. Was it Popeye, Sinbad, Captain Hook, or Buzz Lightyear? So which of those was not a fictional famous sailor? And the answer is D, Buzz Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear was not a sailor, folks. He was, I think, an astronaut, if I'm not mistaken. So if you guess Popeye Sinbad or Captain Hook were the famous fictional sailors, then you were right. And Buzz Lightyear, sorry, you were a famous astronaut, sailor of the sky, technically speaking, I guess. But that was our incorrect answer. We hope that you enjoyed our show this evening. Until next time, stay safe, take care of each other, and make it a great week. Bye-bye. It's the Good News Wednesday show. Come on, kids, it's time to go. Tell everybody that you know. Watch the Good News Wednesday show. Good news Wednesdays find me here. Let's stand up.
boredom and give up you. Watch the boredom.